This video is for atheists, Christians, agnostics, and anyone who thinks they know what the Bible says about God's love. It doesn't matter what you believe about the Bible. It doesn't matter if you believe the Bible to be a book of myths to be rejected as fantasy or a book of truth to be believed. The question is, does the Bible itself teach that God hates people? Again, it doesn't matter if you're a Catholic, a Protestant, atheist, Muslim, Buddhist, or just plain crazy. The purpose of this video is only to find out what the Bible itself says about God and if he has hatred for the people that the Bible says he created. And this will be very easy for you yourself to verify since many people probably own multiple copies of the Bible. Now most people have heard that the Bible teaches that God is Jesus and Jesus is the Word of God. So to substantiate that, we're going to go to the Bible. This is the online Bible called Bible Gateway. And it says in John, the Gospel of John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, so who is the Word? We know the Word is God, and the Word was with God, and He was in the beginning. But who is the Word? Well, according to this verse 14 down here, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, according to the rest of what the Bible teaches, that word that was made flesh is Jesus. So people teach that Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. In fact, we've been exposed to it so much that you've probably seen billboards like this or heard songs like this. Or maybe you've heard famous preachers say things like this. My calling is to preach the love of God and the forgiveness of God. And this. The best picture we could have of God is as of a loving father. So what does the Bible say about God's love? Let's just check it out. Here's the online Bible again. It says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, and this is the King James Version. You can find out the same information in other versions. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So they have that right. God is love. And not only is God love, it says that in this was manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son. So we know that God manifests love toward people from what the Bible says. God manifests love toward people, and he shows that by sending his only begotten son. And then there's the famous verse, John 3, 16, that says, flat out, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the Bible does teach that God loves people, but does the Bible also say that God hates people? We do know that the Bible claims to be inspired by God, and that's found in this chapter and verse. In 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So we know that it comes from God. And then this next verse actually tells how much of God's word needs to be believed. It says, but he answered and said, and I guess this is Jesus up here. Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So the question is, if Christians believe that the Bible is God's book, do they believe every word in that book or just the ones that seem comfortable to them to the exclusion of other obvious teachings? Many, probably most, who profess Christianity say things like, No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you have not done, I'm here to tell you that God does not hate you. Whether you're a Christian or whether you're not, God does not hate you. God doesn't hate anyone. Or that he's not angry with you, he's just angry at your sin. Well, let's see if the Bible says that he actually hates you. 
The Bible well establishes that everyone who has ever lived or will live is encased and cemented in sin. Like this verse here in Ecclesiastes 7.20, it says, There is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So basically, everybody sin. Everybody's a sinner. And in Romans 3, it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So it establishes the fact that there's nobody good and everybody is a sinner. We know, just from what the Bible says, God hates sin. He also says in uh, Jeremiah 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So the Bible teaches that people are caught in sin, which is iniquity, falsehood, and deceit. And here's what the Bible says God thinks of us, workers of iniquity, sin, falsehood, and deceit. In Psalm 5.5, 5, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou, and the context is talking about God, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. I've talked to a lot of Christians and they say, well, what that means is God hates the sin, but doesn't hate the sinner. Well, let's use an illustration. Let's say there's a worker working on a house. If I say I hate the worker on the house, while I may hate the house as well, that statement alone only reveals that I hate the worker, not the house. Remember, it doesn't matter what you believe about the Bible. It doesn't matter if you believe that the Bible is true or not. The fact is, it's flat out dishonest for somebody to approach this verse right here that says, Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. And take that to mean that God only hates the iniquity and he doesn't also hate the workers. The Bible says what it means and means what it says. And Christians just don't want to face the fact that the Bible says that God hates people. To continue on with that passage, it says, Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor, not just this says hatest right here. This right here says the Lord will abhor the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. That's man right there. The deceitful man. And we already learned that the Bible says that every one of us is deceitful and sinful. So God hates us. The next verse is Psalm 7. Psalm 7 says this, God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword, he hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. This is God preparing instruments of death for the people that he's angry with. Psalm 11 continues on with that same line of thought. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. You can't get more clear than that. What's he going to do with that hatred? Upon the wicked, those are the people that he hates, he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Some may say, well, that's in the Old Testament. Things are different now. Well, while things may be different, the Bible that sits on the shelf collecting dust in so many homes says that God is not different. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. But for those who want that New Testament verse, in John chapter 3, this is in the gospel, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. 
And the Bible says in Revelation 2.23, And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. The Bible actually says that God's hatred toward man is not just because of the evil they've done. He hates them apart from wicked deeds. Check this out in Romans chapter 9, verse 11. For the children, talking about Rebekah's children still in the womb, it says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said to her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I have hated. These are two little babies in the womb, and God's choosing to love one and hate the other. So, God loves people, yes, but he also hates them. He loved and died for those he hates. That is the teaching in the pages of the Bible. And it's clear. And he'll pour that intense hatred on them for eternity in hell to fulfill his purpose. So let's just say the Bible is not God's word. It's still a book that we humans have that contain writings that claim to be from God himself. Now, you Christians can deny that it really means that. And you atheists can claim that you don't care about that, but no matter what angle you're coming from, it says what it says and it means what it means. I mean, you can tell me that honey ain't sweet and poop don't stink, but it is what it is regardless of justification, infatuation, refutation, or situation. The Bible teaches that God hates people, a bunch of people, all the people who ever lived are living or will live. So if you claim to be a Christian and you claim to serve a God who doesn't hate, you have to be aware that that is not the God of the Bible.